And hey, do buckers, how the heck are you? So I just found this at a, a local beer store. Uh, it was regularly priced $19.99, but they had it marked down to $14.99. So I got 12 quality Sierra Nevada beers for $15, $7.50 a six pack. Yes, I get that. It's more expensive. <laughs> That's a tad more expensive than your local 30 pack fare. But when you're talking about a quality beer like this, I mean, you can still buy good craft beer and not spend an arm and a leg. So there you go. Uh, it came with these four varieties. Here's the first one I decided to start with because I hadn't had it before. Sierra Nevada Five Hop Experimental IPA. Uh, the bottle says the special IPA features a proprietary blend of five unique varietals with complex flavors reminiscent of orange peel, grapefruit, cedar, and coconut. Uh, the back says it is five. Oh gosh, my eyes went blank on me. Five point eight percent. I didn't get on the website to look up IBUs because I'm gonna kind of wanted to just wing this. So that's actually I'm gonna read on that for now. I'm gonna show you the beer. It pours very nice, uh, kind of an apricot color, I would say. Using my Missouri Beer Fest glass has that on it, and then on the other side, a hop truck. Oh yeah, the aromas are very nice. Before I get too much into that, however, I do want to show you the other three varieties it came with. Uh, the Sierra Nevada Hop Hunter, brewed with farm distilled hop oil. It is 6.2%. Let me show you that bottle. Get my hand out of the way so you can see it. Uh, the Torpedo, which has become a classic. Uh, Torpedo Extra IPA. It is very nice. I've had it before, but not this season. 7.2%. It's a biggie. And a perennial favorite of mine, the Ruthless Rye. I'm a fan of the Rye IPA. This one does say 55 IBUs on it. Does this one say? Oh, this one doesn't say. I wonder why that one says. This one says specifically, but the other one doesn't. Anyways, 6.6%. Uh, .6%, so it's rather big, too. Or nice size. I guess 6.6 six isn't big, but it's not small. Either. So anyway, hey, let's go on with this one here. Uh, Okay, with flavors reminiscent of orange peel, grapefruit, cedar, and coconut. Well, let's start with the aromas first, shall we? I'm still having some nose issues, so I may not be getting this quite as it should be. Although it is bright, I am I am feeling uh, what do they mention here? Uh, grapefruit, cedar. And coconut, or orange peel, grapefruit, cedar, and coconut. I feel almost coriander notes on the nose. I'm certainly getting some orange, some orange zest, orange peel, as they say. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. 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 Uh, <laughs> wow. I didn't see this before. I don't know if you're going to put it in just six packs on its own. I hope they do. This would be a great spring beer. Wow, that is nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, cedar, orange peel, grapefruit, cedar, and coconut. So far, I really noticed the cedar right off the bat. Let me have a few more drinks, and I'll tell you if I'm getting out of this stuff. Yeah, wow, that's something. Uh, wow, yeah, you, I mean, you know, what can I I'm not feeling the coconut big yet, but maybe give me a few sips. So, well, I certainly felt the orange peel, the grapefruit, the cedar. Wow. That, the cedar really hits you right at the end. Uh, it's very nice. It's very different. They can be a hell of a marinade for some chicken. That's what I think. <laughs> Uh, I like to cook chicken thighs for a lot of reasons. Uh, one is price. Uh, they, they tend to be inexpensive as opposed to chicken breasts. Uh, the other great thing about chicken thighs is they're very forgiving. So, I mean, you could do a long cooking method on them. They're, they're, they're great to throw in a crock pot if you want. Uh, but they're also great for throwing on the grill or the smoker. I mean, I love smoking chicken thighs because, again, I mean, the chicken thigh itself is very forgiving and it holds the flavor nicely. You can really over smoke a breast. Uh, <laughs> I don't recommend smoking chicken breast because it will it will get over smoked and will dry out on you if you're not careful. But chicken thighs again are very forgiving and they they hold up flavors well. Uh, that's the first thing that crossed my mind is to put this in a package of chicken thighs and 
toss them there on the smoker at about 200 degrees for, I don't know, three, four hours. Who knows? <laughs> wow. I've got to dig in this one. I got to tell you. I uh, went a little longer on this video than I planned on because I'm hoping to get all four minutes. It's going to be a really long video. Uh, yeah, it, it's good. Uh, yeah, now that I'm, I'm letting it kind of mellow a little bit here. I am feeling more of the aromas that they were describing now that I've kind of let it sit. Again, a lot of it's my issue. I'm having, I'm very stuffy. I'm having a lot of sinus issue. But I certainly feel that all the notes they were talking about for the flavor. I guess there's coconut in there. I'm not feeling coconut as big. Um, I, 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 maybe near the end with the cedar. Um, I'm almost tasting it more as, as coconut oil than, than coconut. You know what I mean? It, it just... Uh, you ever cook with coconut oil? It kind of leaves a lingering flavor. Well, that's kind of what I'm tasting more so than actually, you know, eating coconut. But it's the cedar to me that really shines. It's very nice. So there we go. I'm going to move on to beer number two, but this one rocks. I got to tell you, I mean, I said it was 1497. I think I said 99 earlier, but it was actually 1497 a 12 pack. So if you can get a good craft beer that averages 750 a six pack, well, that's pretty good. I mean, some people really are about quantity drinking. I'm not going to knock you for that, but you don't necessarily have to be a quantity drinker, you know. I mean, you know, what? what's, uh, I mean, there are, you know, uh, not quite crafts so like Jenny Cream runs about six bucks. Uh, excuse me, about six to seven bucks a six pack in my neck of the woods. So, I mean, to pay a little bit more for varieties like this where I've got 12, I've got four different flavors, three of each. Of great quality beers, and I don't have to drink the same boring beer over and over again. You know, for me, I would rather drink quality than quantity. And sometimes I want the the, the bigger beers. Uh, you know, uh, there are others that I really like um, that may be a little bit more. But there are times when you can you can budget, you can buy a, a, a fine quality beer. You just have to pay attention. So hey, I'm trying to beer whisper. I'll be back with a second beer. No kidding. Well, how you do, yeah? So I've got the second of four IPAs from the Sierra Nevada four-way IPA pack. Uh, this is their uh, Hop Hunter IPA. It is six to sixty IBUs, steam distilled hop oil, gathered right in the hop fields. I'm having trouble seeing. Bear with me. <laughs> Give a mighty. Gives a mighty boost to the floral and citrus notes of traditional whole cone hops for intense, unmatched hop aromatics. All right, excuse me while I scratch my nose. I apologize, but it couldn't be helped. Um, <laughs> let's have a drink, shall we? Son of a gun. So I'm using my Schlafly glass because I thought it worked well for an IPA. Let me tell it to you there. Room is very nice on this. My nose is challenged, like I said earlier, so bear with me. I'm just going to take a drink. And... Oh, yeah, it's nice. Um, you know, the funny thing is, I don't know the numbers on that five hop. But after having that, it feels very tame. <laughs> That's not necessarily a bad thing. My point, my greater point being 6250, it's a very approachable IPA. Um, there's, uh, you know, a growing number of serious hop heads that think everything has to be bitter beyond belief. This isn't that IPA. But if you just want, I mean, it, it's a perfect spring IPA. It, it, it's bright, it's floral, it's fruity. Um, again, I mean, it's, it's, I'm not going to call it session strength. It is 6.2% after all, 
but it would be a nice one to be relaxing on a patio with, you know, or, or you know, getting ready to grill with some friends or having a picnic or whatever. Be a nice beer for that. It's got some nice flavor, but it doesn't take over everything. Yeah, there we go. I'm getting some almost uh almost some white pepper like notes on the nose. I'm certainly getting some orange, some some grapefruit. The finish is somewhat clean. It's very nice. Uh, it, it's enjoyable. I don't know that I'm tasting anything remarkable about about this to write home about, but it, I mean, I don't find it flawed either. It's drinkable. It's it's tasty. I think that was when I did a video on it a while back. I think I probably said very similar things because that's kind of what I'm getting from this. I mean, it feels good. Um, the flavors are nice. The aromas are nice. It's very pleasant on all fronts. I don't know that I'm getting anything new under the sun. Don't know that I really have to either, though. I mean, it is just an enjoyable, well put together beer. Yeah, I'm trying to put together some other flavors for you, but I'm having some issues today. Uh, I probably should have had a glass of water after having that five hop or uh, experimental five hop, whatever they call it, because that cedar is very strong in there. So uh, my palate is likely challenged, to be honest. I probably should have had a little, you know, something in between there, but I didn't. It's got a nice little peppery finish, so I kind of like it. Again, I, I don't know if I'm getting that one flavor that makes me go, hey, can be. But, I mean, it's it's likable, and, and there's something to be said for that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just being good. Uh, so there you go. I don't feel the need to really drone on about it. I want to get to beer number three. So here's time to Beer Whisper. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, hey, dude, y'all, I'm back again. So I've got beer number three of the four flavor 12 pack, uh, four way IPA pack, they call her uh, Torpedo. That's become a, a classic Torpedo Extra IPA, 7265 IBUs, I believe, are the numbers. And I'm having trouble, I don't have a good light here, and I'm having trouble reading. And that's on dark, so we're just going to ignore that for now and just wing it. I've got this one in the Ruthless Rye left, but I thought I'd save Ruthless for last. I really love rye malt. Uh, this one is, is again, this 12-pack was $14.97, so it's very affordable. This one typically runs, I, I can usually find it for about 8 bucks a six-pack in my neck of the woods at one store or another. Um, either at, you know, or, you know, at a grocery store, either of my good beer stores, uh, or I can find it for about eight bucks in the four pack, excuse me, four pack, uh, 16 ounce cans, which is truthfully how I prefer to buy it. I really like the pint cans. I just do. I know I'm losing eight ounces, uh, but I just love to pour a pint at home. I just do. It just makes me happy all over. This is a nice IPA. It really is. I really like everything about it. I think it's underrated, as I think most of Sierra Nevada products are underrated in favor of a lot of darling breweries. I, there's, um, I mean, I've got a, in St. Louis or Schlafly, when you talk about St. Louis breweries, and there's a lot of great ones. Urban Chest has a personal favorite, Four Hands. You always hear a lot about perennial artists and some others. Um, and Schlafly gets overlooked. Schlafly's been knocking out great beer styles since 1991. It seems like the breweries that that are known for solid beer styles rather than, than than doing great big crazy beers tend to get overlooked. And I think Sierra Nevada tends to be one of those. I think they're doing a lot of great beers and not getting as much notice as they should be. Getting a lot of uh, citrus on the nose on this, specifically a whole lot of orange and grapefruit. Again, my nose is really challenged. Oh, yeah, I love the bite on this one. It's just gorgeous. It really is. Oh, gosh, that's beautiful. 
over the top? Maybe not, but it's solid. Everything comes at you in just the right place. Uh, I'm feeling, I'm definitely feeling some stone fruit in there. Apricot more so than peach. Feeling some, uh, some grapefruit for sure. Mm. It just finishes so nice and crisp and clean. It's just a great IPA. Yeah, wow. See, I love when I can find a bargain. Um, a beer friend suggested I start doing a series, and I've actually done this before. Uh, but anyway, he suggested I do a series on drinking craft beer affordably. And I've actually done several videos along that vein. I don't know if I've ever done a specific series on it. And I don't know if this is going to be it or not. But, but it kind of makes my point. I mean... These are four great styles, 12 beers for only 15 bucks. Uh, you know, 750, 750 a six pack. Now, by craft beer standards, that's inexpensive. By regular beer standards, maybe not so much, but I mean, uh, most macros in my neck of the woods, unless you're buying 30 packs, uh, can run between six to seven a six pack anyway. So if I've only got to pony up a few more cents for me anyway, I'm going to, you know, I'm not buying cheap ass poorly made macros or malt liquors because the only purpose of buying those crazy malt liquors is, is just to get drunk fast i mean if that's your if that's your point i mean well there you go <laughs> i guess that's your point if you just want to get drunk fast and i hope you're under 25 because if you're over 25 you really at this point should learn to appreciate drinking rather than just getting drunk fast if you're a 40 to 50 year old man drinking malt liquors to get hammered quick, I think there's something seriously wrong with you. You need to grow the fuck up. That's what I'm here to tell you. <laughs> I don't know. You know, there is a culture that likes to chug beers, even older guys. And I think a lot of them do it just to prove they can. And I, I suppose there is some skill involved because I personally can't do it anymore. But it does seem pointless to me. You aren't appreciating that beer, and the argument is, well, you can't tell me what I appreciate. I mean, how do you know I'm not appreciating it? Well, because you're not. I mean, I could take a whole lobster tail and eat it in one bite. Did I taste some flavors that that tail had to offer? Yes, but I didn't appreciate it. And that's the same thing with beer, my friends. If you're taking a good craft beer and you're dropping it, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you're dropping it within seconds, you might have tasted a few things that it had to offer, but you didn't fully appreciate that. And so, I mean, I think the idea of just drinking beer to get drunk or just drinking anything to get hammered, I, I, I think it's rather pathetic if you're over 40 years old. It's time to really get a, a life and maybe examine what you're doing, if that's, if that's your purpose of drinking. That's the great thing about craft beer and craft spirits for me anyway. Now, I'm not, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you've seen some of my vi videos, you know I get toasted upon occasion. But that's not the point. That's not why I drink. And I think that's the difference is, is I, even though I may drink to that point upon occasion, I am appreciating every sip along the way. And I think that's really what, what folks should learn as they get older to you know, the craft beer, craft spirits. They're not about getting hammered quick. They're not about, well, excuse me, I hope that I didn't get any on you. They're really about just enjoying all the flavors. So take your time, enjoy them. Get to hammered if you want. I don't care. But, you know, but, but but be smart, right? Don't drink and drive, obviously. I never drink and drive. Getting back to Torpedo, yeah, I get off track every now and again. Yeah, you know what? I mean, just, you know, it just, I, it's, certain things bother me, right? I, drinking and driving is a very bad thing. You never see me do that. Now, of course, I never have, but I haven't in a very long time. I've made some mistakes as a 21, 22-year-old, and, and now, you know, I, I paid for those mistakes. And I don't do that anymore. I mean, get a cab. It's not that big. Get an Uber, I guess. I guess that's the hip thing to do these days. I've never used an Uber, but what the hell, man? I married my designated driver. She doesn't, doesn't drink. Anyways, yeah, <laughs> now that I've rambled on uh, and irritated some folks, no doubt. Uh, yeah, this is a, a fine IPA. I like this one a lot. Um, it, it, it does have some nice pleasant malt going on. There is a lot of hoppage going on, but it doesn't become overwhelming. I don't know if it's necessarily a hopheads IPA, but it's certainly a well put together one. So there you go. 
I'm Sean Theft here, Whisperer, and I'll be back with the Ruthless Rye and see who else I can irritate with the rest of this video. Well, how you do? So I'm back <laughs> with the last, with the last, the last, the last, the last one. Oh, and I have the Ruthless Rye. 55 IBUs, 6.6%. From the bottle, Ruthless Rye IPA is brewed with rustic grains for refreshing. Rested grains for refined flavors, combining the peppery spice of rye and the bright citrus flavors of whole cone hops. So there you go. Um, that's what they're trying for. I actually haven't had this one for over a year, but it's been a perennial favorite of mine since they started brewing it. Uh, it's a nice kind of a copper ruby hue to it. Mm. I wish my nose was in better shape, but. Again, you do feel that peppery rye. You feel the citrus of the whole cone hops. But it's that rice spice, really, that's beautiful for me. I just love that a lot. So let's just drink, shall we? Oh. Wow. Uh, <laughs> holy crap in a basket. Yeah, that's nice. That's a good beer, I got to tell you. I guess rye isn't for everybody. I really love it. I've talked to a few beer geeks that don't like it uh, for one reason or another. I don't think it works in an IPA. I think it does. I love I love what it does. I love the contrast of it. Um, it's just very nice for me. This one, you do feel some nice toast and malt. You certainly feel that big peppery rye. Uh, you, you feel the hops more towards the end. A hop heads beer, probably not, but darn, it's good, right? <laughs> I, I think the craft beer industry as a whole has been pandering to serious hop heads for way too long. It's time to look at the, the larger market and just make some solid beers. This this really is one of them. Um, show you that bottle one more time there. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think a lot of breweries like Sierra Nevada. Uh, Sierra Nevada does some out of the box stuff, don't get me wrong, but they're really known for making solid styles. I think a lot of breweries, craft breweries specifically, that, that make just solid beers tend to get overlooked for the, you know, the, the breweries that are doing the crazy 100 ingredient beers. I think there's something to be said for just making a style right, and I think that's what they've done with this one. This is a beautiful example of a rye IPA. I just love that you feel that rye all the way through it, but but then at the end you really get that peppery spice combined with those whole cone hops. It's just a nice beer all around. I really dig it, man. So, so yeah, I kind of worked through my four. It's gonna be a very long video and a video, very long, very long video, and I apologize. But I've done I've done individual videos for all of these beers, so I thought let's do one. Talking about the whole four pack, or the whole four pack, the, the whole 12 pack, the four flavor 12 pack, and, and anything else that crosses my mind. And I think we've done that, folks. By golly, by golly, by golly. Yes, sir. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, again, 1497 a 12 pack, you got four flavors, three of each. All quality beers. I mean, yes. Is it more than buying your 30 packs? Yes. Is it slightly more than buying your your more well-known macros in a 24-pack? Yes. But you're getting a quality beer, and that's the difference. I'm Tom the Beer Whisperer, and I'll talk to you later.